Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 555 on this Saturday morning. It is good to see you uh, today. We are wrapping up 1 Peter chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses um, 22 through 25 is what we're looking at this morning. And uh, this is what we see Peter saying. He says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever, because... All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flowers of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So, since uh, yesterday we saw that Peter shared with us that we're valuable, that you and I were bought with a price, and that price wasn't silver and gold. That price that you and I were bought with, were redeemed with, was the precious blood of Jesus. And he says, because you are born again, because you are valuable, but you're not just valuable, I'm valuable. I'm not just valuable. You're Because we, as um, God's kids, are valuable in his sight, he tells us in verse 22, now, since you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, you need to be loving one another fervently with a pure heart. Let's talk about that first part of the verse before we get into the love part. He says, since you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit. Um, this reminds me of Psalm chapter 119, verse 9. It says, how can a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed according to your word? You see, when we read God's word, when we don't just read it, when we read God's word and we do God's word, it, it's like a it's like a purification process. Now, ultimately, you and I are made pure, are washed white as snow by the blood of Jesus. But as far as the day to day practical things in our lives, one of the things that we can use to, as the Bible says, to purify our minds we can be washed with the water of the word the bible says so when we get together even early in the mornings at our live at 555 or when you read through the word of god or you come to church on a sunday or a wednesday and you're working through god's word you realize that as you're reading god's word and as you read it and you're obedient to it it's like your life all the imperfections and the uh, dirtiness of your life is being washed out practically. So that's what he's talking about there in verse 22. Man, man our, our, we've been purified. Our, our lives have been washed free from a lot of this dirty stuff that we find ourselves getting into simply by reading God's word and then obeying God's word. That washes the junk out of our life as we're washed by the water of the word. And then he says, since on account of you and I being washed by the water of the word and on account of us being precious, he says that we need to be uh, sincere in our love for the brethren. We need to love one another fervently with a pure heart. We need to be loving each other. And the way in which we're to be loving each other is fervently. Remember in uh, James, we talked about how the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Fervent, um, consistent, um, just like pressed in, like, like all out there. But that's how Peter describes the love that you and I, who are precious in his sight, needs to be having for each other. For the brethren, for, for those of us who are born again. Our love for each other needs to be fervent love. It needs to be, what does that mean? Sometimes that means that, it, that you have to be intentional with your love for one another. It's not necessarily something that's just going to happen. Sometimes it does. Some people are harder to love than others. Did you know that? <laughs> I'm sure you've experienced that throughout your life. 
thus far. Some people, it takes a little bit more work to love them. Other people, you can naturally love them. It's like, man, you're great to be around. You're, you're a hoot to be with. It's easy to love you. Other people, you got to kind of work at. You got to be a little bit more fervent in loving them. But Peter says that's okay. We need to fervently be loving each other with a pure heart. Not with bad motives, but, but sincerely. Lord, you have loved me greatly. Lord, I'm precious in your sight because of the blood of Jesus. Lord, you love them dearly. They're precious in your sight because of the blood of Jesus. So Lord, help me love them in a pure way. Not with selfish ambitions or, or out of uh, begrudgingly. But, but, but just simply because I'm loved by you, may I love others. And then he goes on to say in verse 23, this is how, this is why you and I are able to love one another fervently. He says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The way that we're able to love one another is not in and of ourself, in and of our flesh, we would fall short. But because we've been born again, because we're now a new creation in Christ, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, because now the Holy Spirit of God dwells in each one of us, we are now able to love each other fervently like God wants his kids to be loving each other. So he says, here's the deal. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed. So we're born again to something that's not corruptible. We're born again to something that's not getting worse. That's not deteriorating. We're born again to an incorruptible seed. The, the, the thing that we're born into is eternal. And part of that thing he describes in verse 23 is that we're born again through an incorruptible seed through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. God's word lives and abides forever. God's word does not fail. God's word isn't fading away. God's word isn't dying. God's word has been preserved. Jesus said that heaven and earth is going to pass away, and we see that happening in the book of Revelation. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, but Jesus says, my word will never pass away. Here we learn in verse number 23 of 1 Peter chapter 1 that the word of God lives and abides forever. It's an eternal word, and it's part, it's this word that you and I are reading even this morning that we're born again by. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And it's the truthfulness of the word of God that allows you and me to enter into that new birth. And then he gives this great example of how God's word abides forever. Starting in verse 24, he says, Because all flesh, you and me, our bodies, all flesh, it's like grass. And all the glory of man... And some things of man can seem to be pretty glorious. Your, your, your fancy car, your nice bicycle, your all this neat stuff, the glory of man, fame, and fortune. He says, well, it's as a flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So he does this contrast. Now, we're born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. Uh, the corruptible seed, things of this world, incorruptible seed, things of heaven, the word of God that lives and abides forever. And to lay out that analogy, he actually quotes from Isaiah um, chapter, where is this? It's Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 through 8, Peter quotes from here. All the flesh, all of our bodies, all the stuff that we can see with our eyes on this earth, it's like the grass, and right now, the grass in Lemhi County, it's growing great, man, because we've had some, some wet, uh, a wet spring, and now the sun is out, and that grass is growing tall, and it's green. But here in about a month, a month and a half, that tall, green, luscious grass, grass let's say it here, tall, green, luscious grass, it's going to start to wither away. As we get into the summer and it's not getting watered, 
This grass that once was green is going to wither away. Right now, wildflowers are everywhere. I was just on a bike ride yesterday, way up high. And as I'm up there, the grass is green. There's flowers everywhere. But again, in a, in a month when I ride up there again, those flowers are going to be dead. They're temporary. God says this stuff of this world is temporary. But he says the word of the Lord Man, that endures forever. That, that, that goes through anything. So God's word is living and it's, uh, it abides forever. God's word is living. It also endures forever. And it's from the seed of God's word that you and I are born again. We're reminded of the conversation that Nicodemus had with Jesus there in John chapter 3. Uh, how can I enter the kingdom of God? And Jesus says, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that's a corruptible seed. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit, and that's an incorruptible seed. You've been born once physically, Nicodemus, but you need to be born again spiritually. And how is Jesus sharing this truth with Nicodemus there in John chapter 3? With the word of God, with his word that lives and abides forever. And so too with us. We realize that we've been born again, not of a corruptible seed, something that's going to die or wither away, but of an incorruptible seed of the truth of the word of God, something that's going to last, something that's going to remain, something that's going to endure through this life. So we can realize this morning, <clears throat> this beautiful truth, that, that, that our born againness is based upon an incorruptibleness. And because of that, because the word of God endures forever and lives and abides forever, and we are born again based upon that truth, our life that we enter into once we become born again is just as eternal, is just as everlasting, endures just as much as the word does. Because we're born again by the word and we're washed by the water of the word in a very practical sense day by day. So today, hopefully you enjoyed a washing as we've read God's word and as we've understand God's word a little bit more. And now as we go out today to do God's word, the messiness, the dirt of this life that we can collect up is washed out as the word of God is brought in. I picture it like a, like a cup and imagine this cup has dirt in it and um, you just take a hose and you put it in this cup and as this hose of water fills up this cup, it turns this cup that had dirt into it first into some muddy water. But the longer you hold that hose pouring water into it, it starts to overflow and it's purifying it. And all the dirt and dirty water that was in there now gets replaced with clean water. That's what happens for you and me as we just simply come before God, we read his word, we obey his word, and then lastly, don't forget what else we were commanded to do this morning. That's to fervently love one another. Why? Because we're precious in his sight, and so are you. And because we are precious in his sight, God says, I want you guys to be loving one another fervently. So that's how 1 Peter chapter 1 kind of comes to a close. Tomorrow morning we'll start chapter 2 as we continue this verse by verse study through the book of 1 Peter, but just some some good practical truth to hold on to today, realizing that God's word endures forever. The things of this earth, the flesh of this word of this world fades away. God's word is eternal and we're commanded in his word to fervently love one another because we're born again, because we're precious in his sight. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for today. God, we thank you for your love and your grace. And Lord, the reason why we're able to fervently love each other, God, is because you have fervently loved us. So God, I pray that we would just, um, or that we would allow your love to flow through throughout our lives, God, as we just simply, um, Lord, encounter different people, God. Give us a pure heart to love them. God, thank you that we are born again, Lord, not of something that's corruptible, not of something that's going to fail or fade away, but we're born again, Lord, by your word that endures forever. Lord, it lives and it abides forever. And um, God, what, what a beautiful truth it is to realize that because your word abides forever, and that's what we are born again by, Lord, this life that we enter into, Lord, this new life, 
it abides forever as well. It's eternal life. Lord, it's going to endure through anything this world throws at it. So God, I just pray that you just be with us this morning. God, fill us with your spirit and thank you for the washing that we receive today as we've simply just studied your word together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great, great Saturday. Um, looks like it's going to be a, a good day out there this morning as the sun was coming up as I was driving into the office this morning. Um, tomorrow at church, we have our friend Wes Bentley from Far Reaching Ministries, who's going to be uh, sharing with us um, some neat stuff that God is doing um, in and through them. So that'll be a real treat. So be sure to come out or tune in live here at 9 a.m. for that uh, message, for that study. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 5.55 as we start um, 1 Peter chapter 2. So hope you guys have a great day.